Good evening and welcome to Real Talk, where every Sunday night we offer insight, education, and resources to in-home caregivers and those affected in their world. These are the children, the parents, the extended family, and everyone who loves them. Our goal is to offer real life topics and learning through discussing real issues and offering real solutions. And tonight I'm very excited to welcome a guest that I've been trying to get on here for a while, Stephanie Bauckham. Stephanie is a professional nanny of 13 years and is the founder and CEO of Nanny Tees. And if you don't have one, you should get one because I have them and they're awesome. Um, and it's an apparel line and lifestyle brand for nannies and caregivers. With a focus on self-care, Stephanie strives to bring light to the nanny community through custom apparel, education, and self-care events. And she's doing some really amazing things. So I'm really excited to talk to her. And tonight we're gonna kind of dig into one aspect of that and discuss how to go from being a nanny to a nannypreneur. And did you coin that term, Stephanie? You know what? I had never heard it, but when I started using it, I found that other people had used it too. So I guess great minds think alike. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. So Stephanie's gonna be sharing some really fantastic information with us tonight. Um, but first I wanna say, welcome Stephanie. We're really excited to have you. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Absolutely. and. Before we kind of dig into everything that we're going to talk about, share a little bit with our audience, kind of about your journey in the nanny world, how you got to this point in your career. We'll dig more into your business and, and turning it into an entrepreneur, but tell us a little bit about yourself so people can get to know you. Yeah, so I am originally, well, first, thank you. Thank you for having me tonight. I'm super excited about this conversation and just for you allowing us to have a platform to share. So thank you uh, for having me tonight. So I originally from Kansas City, um, grew up in a household of musicians and uh, I went off to school to study music and I thought that I was going to be a singer. It's still not too late. It's not too late. And I do sing every now and then, but uh, singer, travel and do all that stuff. But um, after I graduated college, went into corporate America, absolutely hated it. And I uh, actually got laid off, which I always say is the biggest blessing of my life, because that led me into teaching early childhood music classes. And so that was part time. And so I said, you know, what? let me just offer my child care services on the side to some of my students. And, you know, if your parents trust you as their teacher, they're going to you know, trust you with their kids at home. So, of course, they, you know, yes, please come. And then that's how I got into the nanny industry um, by watching my students on the side. I never planned to be a nanny. I never thought I would be a nanny ever. Um, of course, I was the one always taking care of cousins and, you know, holding the baby in church like I was that girl. And so it's, it's just it just came really natural for me. And so as I grew in the industry, um, I learned a lot. I didn't know anything about contracts. I didn't know that we were real employees. Like I thought we were just, you know, um, in the home taking care of kids. But I am it's it's been an amazing journey the last 13 years. And I always say, um, you know, being a nanny just just connected me with the world. And so uh, that's kind of a nanny history. Fantastic. I love I love when I hear those kind of stories that your comment corporate world was not for me. I made a similar decision. Okay. Um, Good. Yeah. And it just, small humans are the best anyway. So Yes. Yes. They are absolutely. So I'm excited to dig into this topic tonight because you and I share a passion, which is we love children. We love families. We love supporting them, but we like having a business too. That's yeah. really, it's related, but separate. Mm -hmm. And so I love this. And you kind of told us how you got into the nanny world. But tell us kind of what, it, what made you think, hey, I want to do something more. What gave you the idea to start your business? And tell us about your business, what it is. Yeah, so I, I feel like my family just has an entrepreneurial spirit. Since I was a little girl, I actually started braiding hair and people would pay me to braid their hair. And so um, from then on, I'd always have like little side things, um, you know, just growing up. But when uh, I was transitioning one of my nanny babies into preschool, my hours were cut, of course, pay, you know, I'm like, okay, I have to do something. I just cannot. And I'm not going back to corporate America. So I said, you know, let me see if there are any t-shirts out there for nannies. And so I said, okay, I'm just going to do it. So I took um, the phrase I nanny 
and put in on two different t-shirts, threw it up on this really simple website. And that same day, Nanny started ordering. I posted in a group and I got orders. I'm like, oh, they like it. And so um, that's how Nanny Tees was birthed. Uh, simply the phrase, I nanny on a tee. And like nannies loved it. So then, um, you know, we started doing other phrases, uh, mugs, bags, and all that. And so Nanny Tees became its own apparel line. And then so as I, you know, went on and I learned more about the um, nanny groups and, you know, the local groups, Facebook groups, I said, oh, these nannies are like going through the same thing I'm going through. Like the mom is late every day and like (laughs) it literally puts me behind and I'm in traffic and, you know, they're paying me late and I'm working 10 extra hours a week and they're not considering overtime. I'm like, oh, there's a whole thing here. And so I feel like the more I started sharing my story, I became relatable. So I always say, yes, Nanny Tees is an apparel line for nannies, but it's really like a community um, of support and self-care. And so that's just how it it all came about. So we're a lifestyle brand and an apparel line for nannies and caregivers. Absolutely. And I've seen you develop a lot of of things. Can you tell us just a little bit about some of the things that you've been doing just in the last few months that have been really fantastic? Yeah, yeah. So we um, launched a self-care box for caregivers. And back in my mind, for years, I've always wanted some type of box, but I never knew how I was going to do it. And so with COVID happening and us having to cancel all of our events, um, you know, we were planning a tour in 2020 to host spa parties around the nation. Like we were partnering with nanny groups and agencies and it was like a real thing happening. But of course, you know, due to COVID-19 and I said, I cannot just let this, you know, wait until we can go back outside again. I have to do something. So again, I'm like, okay, you know, nannies are in a pandemic. We are exhausted. Some of us have gotten laid off. So let me take my spa parties and put them in a box and ship them out to nannies. And that's how we got the self-care box up and going. So, and it's doing really, really well. Mm -hmm. And this isn't something that we talked about ahead of time. Um, So I'm going to totally put you on the spot here, but talk to us a little bit about the webinars that you've been doing, because you've been doing something incredibly impactful in the last few months. Yeah. So, um, Earlier last year, well, mid last year, everybody knew the thing that went down with George Floyd. Mm -hmm. And in the Black community, um, those things have been happening for years, but it was something different about this time. And um, as a Black nanny, I've experienced racism while on the job. You know, um, a lot of my families have been non Black. I have had Black families. And so just being a Black nanny, we experience different things. So I said, I want to grab a group of Black nannies together to share our stories. So that's where Nanny While Black came from. Um, and it's it's just been so amazing. And I love how the nanny community has received us. Um, it's just a webinar series to just educate and just to hear our hearts because it's different, you know, if you're a white nanny with white kids versus a Black nanny with Black, you're automatically stereotyped, you're automatically judged. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I just wanted to kind of, you know, create a space for us to share our stories. So Okay. Nanny While Black has, is something that I'm going to continue to do. Um, and we also have Nanny While Latinx. We heard from uh, Hispanic, Latina, Brazilian nannies. And so, you know, I just think it's a way for us to just bring more awareness to what's really going on as nannies. Mm-hmm. I would agree. And I, I know that for me, I've been in this industry for 35 plus years. I'm in my 36th year. Wow. A lot of my friends come from a whole variety of different backgrounds. And yet watching those webinars, my eyes were open in a whole new way. Uh, There were a couple of times where I literally sat and wept for some of the things that people have had to experience. And so it was super impactful. And I love that you that you really put a lot of thought behind it, gathered a group of people who were really willing to be open and vulnerable because it provided such an amazing opportunity for your voice to be heard and for people to learn. So thank you for that. It's really been fabulous. What made you decide, aside from the fact that just there was a great response, what is it about being in the entrepreneurial role that really lights you up or sets you on fire? I, again, I've always had some type of side something um, growing Mm -hmm. up, but I, I love, number one, filling a void. 
I love being a creative, like everything that Nanny Tees has, like, it's just all in here. And I have a lot more. And it just, I feel like it gives me a chance to be me and to share some of me with other people and also like relate. And so I just love creating. And one of the other things I love doing is helping, you know, people start their own businesses. It's just like something just sparks me when somebody says, I have an idea and I can like give them the strategy in 10 minutes. I'm like, okay, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. This is what, and it just, something about it just lights me up. And so I just think I have one of my gifts is just like helps and and strategy. And it's just fun for me to just have, hear this idea and just take it and run and see other people thrive. Because I feel like some people don't even know deep down they're entrepreneurs. They just need a little push, a little tug to, you know, um, take that leap. So it just brings me joy to see other people thrive. Absolutely. Uh, do you like coach people like a formal thing or is it informal? Tell us a little bit about that. I do. I don't share it often um, simply because I have quite a bit going on, but I absolutely do on this side. And I, and actually this year, it, that's something I want to do more of. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm in the process of writing some eBooks and guides because every, almost every day I get a question about something and I'm like, okay, I have to like put it in a package and, you know, put it out there. And that, that, you know, for me, I feel like that's going to help more people. But yes, I do. I do offer business coaching, consulting, and um, brand strategy and things like that. Fantastic. Is there anything else kind of under your nannypreneurship flag that you're doing that you want to share with us about? Yes, yes. So actually, uh, last year, we had online business fairs for nannypreneurs. And that's something I want to do more of. It was just, I think that nannies are so creative. Uh, Newborn care specialists are so do just something about caregivers. Um, We just have a gift. And when we had our first online business fair, I was literally blown away by the creativity in the nanny industry. And I just think that everybody just needs exposure. Um, and there are some nannypreneurs that have brilliant ideas and all they need is just a platform to share. So I definitely want to um, promote nannypreneurs in the future. I definitely, uh, well, in the present, and I definitely want to um, open another, another course. We did Nannypreneurship 101 in uh, 2017. And so I plan on bringing that back for any nannies who want to start a side business. Mm-hmm. Um, people don't know that I also place nannies. Um, it's not full time, um, but you know, over the years, I I remember sending my friends to nanny jobs in my place. I would call my sister, say, hey, there's a family who needs somebody. I can't go. Will you go? And so I'm like, huh, OK, let me do something with it. So um, even doing some placements and helping other nannies start their thing, like there's just so much I want to do. And I'm learning to pace myself, because if you're not careful, you will be overwhelmed and overloaded with your creative mind. So I understand that, you know, Nobody's going to steal what I have. It's going to happen and mm-hmm. I'm going to do it when I can. So definitely just want to um, promote other nannies because it's like they have been so supportive of me mm-hmm. and I want the nannies who supported me to support another nannypreneur. So yeah, that's a big goal of mine. Absolutely. So I want to talk some more about that in just a second, kind of get some tips from you to okay. share with our audience. But first, could you explain to our audience who might not know or understand what you're talking about or might want to get involved, what's an online business fair? Okay, so um, basically what I did was I had um, a group of nannies who were entrepreneurs kind of fill out a little form and I went live and one by one, they would literally come up for one or two minutes to just pitch, share their business. Here's my website. Here's the deal. And that's it. So everybody basically got a chance to share what they're doing. And Mm -hmm. we did it. um, Was it? through National Nanny Recognition Week last year. And I think we had over 30 nannypreneurs on. So, so yeah, my goal is to do one, one once a quarter and uh, yeah, just promote nannypreneurs. Fantastic. So we're going to post your contact information in the feed. If okay. they're interested in doing something like that, maybe a nanny has a business and they want to be a part of that. Can they just contact you through the information that we'll have put up? Absolutely. Yeah, we have an online form and everything for you to sign up. Perfect. So we'll make sure that that gets up in the feed either um, afterwards or whatever. We'll make sure that gets up there. Uh, So if a nanny is sitting back watching this and thinks, you know, I had this idea and I thought maybe I could turn it into a business. What tips would you share for them on kind of how to get started? What do they need to know? 
The first thing I always say is make sure that it's something you enjoy doing. You know, sometimes you have these ideas and they're good ideas, but they're not quite something you're passionate about. And I've been there. I've been, I've like launched stuff and like, I'm like, oh, I really don't want to do this. But um, so make sure deep down it's something you really, really want to do. Um, I'm big on writing it out. Write down every idea you have about this thing. And, you know, always um, make sure you establish the vision of why you're doing it, who you're going to serve, what you're doing, how you're going to do it. Um, I know people get really, really confused about business plans. They can be anywhere from one page to 30 pages. Do not overstress it. Just as long as you have your mission in place, um, that's that's a huge thing. Always, 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 if you're going to start the business, make sure you register it locally. Uh, don't go into business just, you know, illegal. We want to make sure that we do things right. And I say that because I've been in business six years and last year, because I had everything, you know, together, my banking, I was able to get grants. So you want to make sure that you do business legally. We don't do under the table. We know we don't get paid as nannies under the table. So don't do business under the table. Uh, That's a huge thing. And then um, don't be afraid. This is a big thing. A lot of us don't like to go on social media and show our faces. But I think that a reason that Nanny Tees is successful is because I put myself into it. I'm a nanny. I'm relatable. I get what you get. Like I'm the literally the one answering my social media, um, answering your questions. So you get me. And so don't be afraid to put yourself in the brand. Um, I know everybody's not comfortable, but we want you. And that's why, um, things sell, you know, because you're relatable. So don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Um, Don't be afraid to just go for it. I think that sometimes we think everything has to be perfect. I told you all six years ago when I launched Nanny Tees, my website was terrible. It was absolutely awful, but I got sales the same day just because I went for it. So start where you are. Um, You'll learn along the way. Don't be afraid to ask for help because You'll spend a lot of money trying to figure things out on your own. There are people out there to help you. Google is your friend. Pinterest is your friend. Mm -hmm. Um, Facebook groups are your friends. So yeah, just go for it. Yeah, I love uh, several of the things that you said there. Do it legally. Um, (laughs) That's that's so huge. I I see nannies who have businesses and some of their business, maybe they're making mugs, whatever, and they're copying, copying corporate logos. Yes. On things. And it's like, that's not legal, guys. It's not yeah. legal. You know, yeah. and I'm big on saying, if you want to be treated like a professional, respected like a professional and paid like a professional, you need to act like a professional. Yes. And one of those things is doing everything illegally. So I love that you said that. I also love your tip about know your why, because that's huge. If your why is, I just want to make money, you will fail. Yes. Your why has to be bigger than that. The money comes, but it has to be bigger. So I love, I mean, you're just giving all the tips that I live for in running a business. So fantastic. Um, If someone says to you, I want to do this, Stephanie, would you coach me? Or how do I find a coach? Where do they find that kind of support? Because I think a lot of people... They either want it for free, which some people do it for free. That's great. And if they do, more power to them. Some people also do it paid. But a lot of people don't even know where to start. And a lot of people tend to forget that whether it's free or paid, the time and the effort and everything that goes into it is an investment in yourself. Mm -hmm. It's not an expense. So where does somebody find that if they're looking for a coach? Yeah. So um, I definitely coach. So reach out to me um, if you have questions. Mm -hmm. And if I can't help you, I definitely, you know, know a few people who can. Um, I'm super big on Facebook groups uh, and local Facebook groups. You never know who's in your own network. Um, Mm -hmm. Put it out there on the status. Say, hey, I'm looking for a business coach or resources to get started. You know, does anybody know anybody? And I am big on making an investment. You know, if you can save you know, $25, $30 a week for like three, four months, I'm telling you, you will get the return. So kind of what you put in it is what you get out of it. Um, And I understand that everybody has a budget. You know, when I started, I had no money to, you know, hire a coach, but I had Google, I had podcasts, I had YouTube. I love YouTube University. You can find anything on there. I find stuff to fix, 
from <laughs> YouTube. Mm-hmm. So there are tons of resources. Also, um, another one that I love locally here in the U.S., they have a program called SCORE with the SBA. Um, they have, I guess some people are retired or they're really, you know, experienced in business who are willing to coach you for free. So mm-hmm. don't be afraid to uh, check out I think it's SBA.gov or just Google SCORE business and you'll be able to connect with local mentors. So the tons of resources out there. Yeah, there are lots of great resources. I love that you're sharing all that stuff. We've already gotten a lot, um, a ton of stuff, and it's all good stuff. And as a business owner myself, I'm like, yes, 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 that's great. Um, Is there anything else that you'd like to share? Kind of one final takeaway that you'd like to tell anybody who's thinking about starting a business out there? I would say that there's somebody waiting on you. Um, I know I was one person who was afraid to do things, but what if I never put out nanny teas? I wouldn't be here talking to you right now, Tanya. Like I wouldn't. And so we have to, I know it's normal to feel fear, but you're going to have to move past it and understand that the vision is not just about you. It's about serving somebody else. And so, you know, while you had this thing in the back of your head for years, remember there's people who need what you have, no matter what it is. If you even want to coach, if you, you know, want to become an NCS, there's families who need you specifically. So don't be afraid. Don't, don't, allow the fear to hold you back, you know, because there's somebody who really, really needs what you have. That is amazing advice. I love that. Um, yeah, I may have to quote that and credit it back to you. <laughs> that sure. was really great advice. <laughs> so we are almost out of time, but I want to say thank you so much for joining us tonight, Stephanie. It has been an honor to have you on with us and to learn from you. And your takeaways for our audience tonight were just fantastic. I really appreciate it. So thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks so much for having me. This was fun. Yeah, it's my pleasure. It was fun. I enjoyed it. Um, So if you as our audience have any questions about this topic or anything related to entrepreneurship, whether you're a nanny or not, put them in the feed and tag Stephanie or tag Newborn Care Solutions, and we'll make sure she gets it and you get your answers. And if you're wanting to rewatch this segment or any of our past Real Talk episodes, along with accessing our other content, pop on over to newborncaresolutions.com and click on the education tab or check out all of our content on our YouTube channel. Just search Newborn Care Solutions Real Talk and you'll find them all. So thank you for joining us and have a fantastic night.